Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today for your match preview. <sighs> Another one. <laughs> for Chelsea versus Brighton in the third round of the Carabao Cup. I want to um, probably rephrase that for the last round of the Carabao Cup. Because look, as, as much as, as... As early as this is... In terms of the season and all of that, I can't help but be completely honest with you now. You ain't going to see me go crazy like I think I did in my last match review or the one before that where we're dropping ridiculous points, losing ridiculous games. Now, I think a lot of us have reached the point where we know what's coming. So, I'm going to be completely real, completely honest. I'll give you my starting 11 in terms of what I think, and I think most of you are going to agree, what needs to be done which we know is not going to happen. Now we now we just we just know. So this leads me to the point that I was about to make. For tomorrow, I feel like we are walking straight to the guillotine. Like I can see the guillotine in front of me. I know what's about to happen when they put my head on the flipping guillotine and I know what's going to happen when the blade comes down. <laughs> Like, I know. We just know. We're anticipating we are we can see it in front of us. We know what's about to go down. But what hurts and what strikes me is tomorrow is a game where it simply isn't allowed. It can't happen, but it's going to. What do I mean? We're playing Brighton. Out of all the teams, we are playing Brighton. Brighton, who we played poker with all that time for Caicedo. Brighton, the same team who we took Graham Potter of. Brighton, the same team who we took half the recruitment team of. Brighton, the team that have somehow still, without all of those people in their club, have ended up upgrading. <laughs> and we've regressed. On top of that, they've got 115 million. We've got Caicedo. But we just know that even with Caicedo... They're going to come to the bridge and they're going to do a number on us. But that's what stings. All of that that I've just said and Brighton are going to be the ones to come to Stamford Bridge. Not even the uh, not even the Amex. Stamford Bridge are home and they're going to knock us out. I don't know what to say. <laughs> this is the thing. We know what's going to happen. We know, we know. There ain't going to be any other alternative here. There won't be. Now, realistically, a cup game, anything can happen. But anything can happen when you see a team where it's capable of, at least, at the bare minimum, scoring a goal. Please, someone in the comments, tell me where's the goal coming from tomorrow if we are to score one. Where's it coming from? Sanchez? If anything, I reckon maybe in the 92nd minute where Sanchez is trying to probably get us a consolation, he comes out for a corner and he probably heads it in. Probably the only place we're getting a goal. And you know, it's, it's jokes, it's banter and it's all this, but if you don't laugh, you cry. And that's where we are right now because we are in the mud. Not even in the mud. We are so far deep into the mud, you can't see us anymore. We're basically buried. <laughs> we're basically buried. And this is, what's, this is what we're preparing ourselves for tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is a game in a competition where you would expect rotation to an extent. Now, we've got to bring some context to the situation here because I feel like, and the vibe that I got from the press conference earlier on, was that we're going to see some rotation. Am I, am I right? Apparently Petrovic might be getting a game. Yeah, okay, we'll just take away the one guy that's actually been saving everything that's been peppered at our goal, all bar maybe one or two, because he can't do everything. And we're going to bring a brand new goalkeeper who, once again, is unproven. We don't really know. And I'm not even going to blame Petrovic if he plays tomorrow. But you're removing Sanchez, the one guy who's been man of the match for two games consecutively, has given us some sort of a chance to actually go and take our chances up top and probably do something. We're going to take that away. In a game where, this is what I was referring to, we're not in Europe. We're playing one game a week and we're getting these results. And we're going to rotate in a competition where we're at home and we have to win to progress to the next round, and it's all we got. We ain't got Europa or Champions League or even Conference League. We ain't got, like, Brighton having to uh, play, play play European football. We ain't got that. Brighton did. 
And even then, they won their Premier League game, and now they're coming into this, another competition. Three games in the space of a week. Less. Sorry, let me take that back. Three games in the space of six days for Brighton. Us? Ah, just the two. <laughs> and no Europe. Just the two. We, we had a week to prepare for Villa. Bottled that. And now we've got to play Brighton. It's our first game in the space of three days in for the first time this season. And we're meant, to, we're meant to rotate. Whilst we're 14th and we're playing the way we're doing, we're meant to rotate and bring on even more inexperience in the hope that might, they might give us something. Nah, man. But it's all we might have to do. Now, Brighton, I feel like, are going to come with a strong team. They might rotate maybe a little bit just in terms of fitness because maybe they have to. But you best believe they're going to come with a team. And you know what's scary about Brighton? Even if they turn to players that we don't even know they'll probably come on and do something crazy and Cizo is a clear example of that Mitoma popping out of nowhere is a clear example of they have players in 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 I don't even know where they're hidden no one knows them but when they pluck them out pff, pff, explosion they just explode that's Brighton <laughs> that's Brighton and they're coming to the bridge tomorrow and like I said we know what to expect now in terms of the starting eleven, in terms of the, the injury news, who we have available, we have the same players available as we did on the weekend. But it seems like Chukwameka and Badiashile, if I'm not mistaken, are back to partial team training. They won't feature tomorrow. Although, on top of that, we do have Malo Gusto who is now suspended because he picked up a straight red. And I don't understand how Chelsea have not appealed that yet. How have we not got any word that Chelsea have put in an appeal? That should be appealed. We've not appealed. What are we doing? What are we doing? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, Nicholas Jackson is available because his suspension will only kick in for the five yellow cards during the Premier League game. So the next game against Fulham, he is suspended and we don't have a striker. Or we have to start with Armando Broya, who isn't even ready. Pochettino said in the press conference earlier, he can maybe play 20, 30 minutes. He can't do more. And that's correct. That's understandable. So... What are we going to do against Fulham? Because there's definitely, there's definitely no way he gets from 20 or 30 minutes to 90 by Saturday or Sunday. When do we play? On the weekend. No, no chance. But it's all we got. So this Brighton game is going to be absolutely crucial. But we know what's coming. We know what's coming. And this is why the reaction after tomorrow's game is not going to be the same as it has been for the last few. Because we know what's coming. It's going to be a thing of, oh, so... It happened, just like we thought. That's what's going to happen. We are starting to die inside. As fans, we're starting to die inside. You know, it's, it's absolutely incredible, the situation that we're in. And tomorrow, after this loss against Villa, it's only going to add on, and God forbid what's going to happen. As I said, against Brighton. Of all teams, Brighton. Tony Bloom. Of all chairmen and owners, Tony Bloom. <laughs> Barber, CEO of all CEOs, Barber is going to come to the bridge of his bright and they're going to do a number on us. That's just how it is, isn't it? That's what's going to happen. We're waiting for it. We're waiting for it. So, what do we do tomorrow? Personally, I'd go strong. Or, well, I, I stress the word strong. Um, right now, we couldn't even put the word strong together in a sentence. You know, um, or even spell the word strong. That's how weak we look. But... I would put out a team that would be deemed as our strongest because it's a cup game and it's the only cup game we got up until when we start the FA Cup run or if we get through to the fourth round. It's all we got. So there's no reason to rotate at this time. If we were winning games and we were using a lot of energy up and we're, you know, we're in a good place, cool, rotate. But tomorrow, there's no rotation. Why? Rotate what? <laughs> we need to go and win. We need to find a way of getting this team to play. So it means having to play our strongest, or like I said, I, I stress the word strong. But what would I do? Let's get right into it. This would be my starting 11. Now, let's get cracking. Um, in terms of the goalkeeper, um, look, we're hearing about Petrovic. I'm sorry, Petrovic, with all due respect to you, I need some certainty. And that's not to say you aren't certain, but right now, the last two games, Sanchez has proven to be man of the match and for a reason. And if it wasn't for him, we would have lost by a lot more. So Sanchez has to stay in between the sticks. That's just me. Sanchez starts. Now, 
we got to bring into context um, that Gusto is suspended. So this means there has to be a little bit of a reshuffle. But what would I do? I'd put De Sassi in place of Thiago Silva. Thiago Silva is, yes, starting to show his age. And it was inevitable. Let's be honest. 39 years old. I'm surprised he got this far. <laughs> it's Thiago Silva and he's been absolutely outstanding. But he cannot play two games consecutively in the space of three days. Especially after having put in the performance that he's already put in. Like, no. That, you, you're, you're guaranteed tomorrow is going to be a clangor for him. So he can't play. De Sassi, for me, would come in in place of Thiago Silva. Now, for the love of God... I heard, I heard, I heard Pochettino speak about this in the press conference, and I don't understand. I don't understand. He's coming out going, yeah, no, Colwell in his position has been great. And to be honest, in 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 context, in isolation, as a left back, I'm surprised Colwell was actually playing the way that he played, especially against Aston Villa. It was okay, but that's what I expect from a Colwell at left back who's not a left back. If you put in a performance that I deem as okay, mate, congratulations. You've actually done a good job. But that doesn't mean he belongs there. So please, for the love of God, can we have Levi Colwell as a central defender again? Please, I am screaming for this. But we know what's coming tomorrow. We're going to have Colwell at left back, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So... <sighs> Colwell for me, central defender. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know down in the comments. I think it's inevitable. Now, left back, I'd go Ian Matson. If we're going to rotate, yeah, because it's a Carabao Cup game, if you're not playing Ian Matson tomorrow, he's never playing a game ever again. In place of a Ben Chilwell, absolutely okay. But if we refer back to the press conference, we already got a clue and a little hint that Chilwell is going to be playing tomorrow, isn't he? And it looks like he's not even playing as a left back. We're actually going to return to the experiment. That's the vibe that I got from the press conference. We better not. If we do, I've already said that heads will roll. In, in our past couple of games and the previews that I've given you if in terms of the lineup, if we see Chilwell tomorrow at left wing, I swear to God. I swear to God. If we see Colwell left back, Chilwell left wing, I am flipping. I am flipping. But that's not going to do anything. That'll only be me, where things will kick off here, and then I will calm down, and then nothing will happen. But... I deem the rest of the fan base are probably going to do the same thing. Am I correct? Anyway, Matson for me, if there's ever a time where an opportunity should be given for a player like Ian Matson, who I believe has the capabilities to make some sort of a difference, it would be him at left back. Left back. Right? Now, who's playing at right back if we've got De Sassi at centre back? Tomorrow's the time to bring this guy back, I reckon, man. Trevor Chalaba. We need the right back. He's played at right back. He can do it. Some people are going to say play Caicedo there. No, 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 no. What? Because De Zerbi done it once. <laughs> no, no. If Caicedo was fully fit, yeah? Maybe. If he can, can play in that position, maybe. He's been playing with a bandaged knee. He's got bandages on. You want him to be bombing up and down that right-hand side against Mitoma? Are you mad? <laughs> Hell no. Hell no. Because you best believe after 10 minutes, he's going to end up injured. Hell no. For me, look, Chalaba's not been used. His future's up in the air. We know he's probably going. But if there's a time where I turn to Chalaba and I go, do you want an opportunity? They come very few and far between. But you've got an opportunity. Show me what you got. Prove me wrong. Go out there and get the job done. And I would actually consider... Chalaba for me at right back tomorrow whilst we need a right back because we ain't got a right back James is injured Gusto suspended there's no one to turn to I would go with Trevor Chalaba hands down hands has to be there's no other alternative unless you play the sassy at right back okay who's playing at centre back it's gonna be Thiago Silva again isn't it well you're gonna have to pick one there has to be a sacrifice for me, I feel like we get better stability with this than we do having to stick the Sassi on the right and Thiago Silva at centre-back. So for me, that would be the back four. In terms of the midfielders, I think it's evident at this point, look, if I get if I get Conor Gallagher in a double pivot alongside Caicedo again, I swear, once again, I'm flipping. I'm going to flip again. If I see Enzo in a 10, I'm flipping. 
It's, it's, it's inexplicable. It's, at this point, it's inexplicable. Put Enzo back in his position, please. Alongside Caicedo in that midfield and let them do what they got to do against Brighton. A team that like to have the ball. Let them hopefully control the ball against Brighton. Fingers crossed. But I would do that. Please, for the love of God, and apparently this might actually happen. I've heard in terms of the rumour mill that we are, or it seems like we might get a start from Cole Palmer. Now, I would play Cole Palmer in the 10. I would also consider, taking all things into consideration here, and i got to be honest, right? I would also consider playing Palmer, if I can move him on screen for you guys right now, playing him there, and Sterling gets dropped. And then it would mean Gallagher has to come into the 10. Cool. But for me, no. Cole Palmer in the 10, because he's a, he's a 10. He can play there. He's technical enough. And we need some bloody technicality in that position right now, man. We absolutely need it. We are screaming for it. But like I said, Cole Palmer in the 10, it would have to mean that Sterling has to play on the right-hand side. I would stick with Mudrick on the left-hand side and give some consistency to his game because he actually done somewhat decent against Aston Villa. And we ain't got anyone else but to stick Nicholas Jackson up top tomorrow. It can't be Broyer. He can't start. He can't play 90. There's no one else to play. So Jackson plays. But if it means that we play Cole Palmer on the right-hand side, so in place of Sterling, it would mean that Gallagher has to play as the 10 because there's no one else. So this, for me, would be my starting 11. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section below. Now, in terms of my score prediction, as um, as the mic is doing all sorts of a madness, apologies if you just heard a crash in your ear and you're wearing earphones, I apologise. But, as I tell you guys to, to subscribe, hit the notification bell to uh, be notified of when I have uploaded, and check out the socials, they are on screen, and hit the like button if you've enjoyed this. I will be giving you the review tomorrow after it's all said and done. My score prediction is, and I'm going to be completely honest and frank, no hesitation. Last game I said 1-1 because I was hesitant. And I did tell you guys I wouldn't be surprised if Aston Villa left with three points. And that's exactly what happened. But I said 1-1 because I don't like to come on here and say we're going to lose. But at this point, I can't be lying to you guys. I'm lying to you guys if I say that we're not we're not expecting it. So, I'm going to come on here and tell you what I think is going to happen. Chelsea nil, Brighton 2. End of story. <laughs> I think we bottle it 2-0 tomorrow. I still don't see how we score. I think Brighton will actually dominate the possession. I think they're actually going to have more of the ball. But the thing with Brighton is they know what to do with it and they're clinical. So I think we're going to be put on the back foot straight away. And it's not even putting put on the back foot so then we can hit counters. So then we can launch, you know, attacks that they are not really expecting. We play in a way that's maybe a little unorthodox to what Brighton expect. Like, no, I genuinely think Brighton are going to love to have the ball tomorrow. They're going to be clinical with it. They're going to get the job done. And then they knock us out. Now, if Chelsea would like to come and prove me wrong, please, with pleasure. Please, with pleasure. But do I see it happening? No. So, prove me wrong. Chelsea, prove me wrong. Please prove me wrong. Please, for the love of God, prove me wrong. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Please prove me wrong. Please show us something. Please score a goal. Please do something that's going to lift our spirits. Let us know that you are still here in some sort of a capacity. Please, prove me wrong. So I'll see all of you tomorrow after it's all said and done and we will see if they've proven me wrong or if they have unfortunately proven me right and I'm going to come on here pretty calm and composed. I'm not going to flip off and do crazy things. I'll say it, things exactly as they need to be said but it's because we are expecting it now, aren't we? So let's see what happens. Let me know your score predictions. Let me know what you think is going to happen down in the comment section below and I will see all of you tomorrow after it's all said and done. Thank you all so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one, people. Take care and peace.